Well, U.S. governors are sounding the alarm, saying our trajectory is basically the same as what they had in Italy. Whoa. CBS News medical contributor Dr. Tara Narula is here to answer your biggest questions about the virus. Tara, welcome back. I hope that's not true. Do you feel that, too? Well, I think Italy? we need to pay attention to that. Yeah, um, and learn from that. Exactly. We, we got a, this question a lot. Uh, we're going to take Casey's, though. What does it mean for pregnant women, women, the coronavirus? Yeah, a lot of pregnant women concerned. Yeah. So, you know, unfortunately, this virus has only been around for a couple months, so we really don't have the long-term data to tell us a lot. So far, uh, it does not seem that pregnant women uh, are more at risk or will suffer more severe disease. That being said, with other viral illnesses like the flu, for example, women pre who are pregnant can develop more severe disease. So we really need a lot more data to inform us. Uh, in addition, it does not seem at this point in time that pregnant women can pass the virus on to the baby. Mm -hmm. um, it not, has not been found in the amniotic fluid or in the breast milk. But again, all of the science is really evolving, and we will need to, to look forward as we move along. We got a question from Shannon on Twitter who asked, Allergy season is here. Since it appears some have mild symptoms when infected with the virus, how do we know the difference between allergies yeah. and the virus? I, my son asked me this when we were out for a walk the other day. Yeah, so I mean, some of the symptoms can overlap. First, you want to think about the fact that with allergies, it tends to be more chronic, lasting kind of weeks or months, more seasonal, maybe has some changes with the environment that you're in. And allergies tend to be more the uh, sneezing, runny, stuffy nose, itchy, watery eyes. With COVID, you're really going to have fever, which you shouldn't have with allergies, more of the shortness of breath, mm -hmm. more of that dry cough. With allergies, you may get a cough if you have some post-nasal drip, but less less common. Um, and then more systemic systems with COVID, like the headache and the muscle aches mm -hmm. and the fatigue. So delivery services, particularly takeout food delivery, uh, overdrive right now. Yes. Uh, you know, so we've got a question here, which I think is a great one. This is from a viewer on, on Instagram asking, uh, should we be concerned about our food sources and the people dropping them off? Yeah, I think about this every night because yes. my husband and I order in every night. Um, so one of the things you want to understand is that so far there's really been no evidence that COVID can be transmitted through food or through food packaging. Um, that being said, if you want to take precautions, con uh, when you have the driver deliver or whoever's delivering, leave it outside the door. Mm -hmm. You can leave the money out there so you don't actually have that face-to-face -face interaction. It feels so rude, though. It, please it, understand. You can leave in a kind sorry. note. They're uh, probably nice happy, note. too. Yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah. probably pleased. They're, um, they're afraid of us. And then when you take the packaging in, because we do know that there can be some droplets on surfaces that we have to pay attention to, you want to bring it somewhere that's not in the area you're going to be eating. Discard the packaging. Mm -hmm. Take the food out and don't use the containers or the utensils that came in the bag. Put it in your own and then clean the surface where you put that down and wash your hands. I'm using hand sanitizer as a nice light vinaigrette on yes. my salad. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend it. Tara, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>